Y'all keep multiplying. What is it, Christmas? Uh, very, very yeah. ugly Christmas. Oh, oh. So are these like, do they take like Christmas, the same mold for Christmas trees and they come out brown? Or are these like the defects? <laughs> I think there was like two different options, like green or brown. And I think we yeah. the brown ones. Yeah, that makes but sense. Very I'm just saying that would be yeah. a good use for the defects, right? You yeah. just say, all right, here yeah. you go. Bunk pieces of yeah. tree. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Why do they come in different colors, like the fish care? Yeah. So these are our newest, like, dense habitat that's been kind of put out on the market, and it's just going to help with forage recruitment for the smaller uh, bluegill and, and fry like that. It's going to create tighter spaces for hiding and protection versus like the larger moss specs that we've used in the past. Right. So this is kind of new out on the market. It's the ugly tree. It's nice. Like All, right there. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So we have like six little Fish shrubs that, that we're going to put in just along the shoreline. And I thought for purpose of casting distance off of like the dock area, um, right around in this area, not too far from the Sounds good, I think. So Where they just get held down with a cinder block. So yeah, two of them have like spikes in them. These actually do uh, piece together into like an actual tall Christmas tree, like three segments. For the purpose, I found like I've been messing around with them a little bit. I kind of like doing the single segments like this. They're more like bush-like, and they're just I mean, they're just a little bit smaller. So I was gonna do all six segments and kind of put two to a cinder block and there's a few that have spikes that you can just kind of push down. Oh, cool. Yeah. You got somebody new with you? Yes. Hi, I'm Kyla. Kyla? Yes, sir. I know you. I'm Steven. Steven. Yeah. Last yeah. Year. I'm Chad. I'm Chad. Cool. All right. Well, let's get to it.
All right, so they're back from the fish shocking. Let's see what uh, we learned. Anything exciting? Same stuff, a little bit bigger, uh, grown a little bit. And uh, we, you know that bass, that big bass we got last time, it was, it's still right there, right off of those rocks right there. Huh. We, she came back. I heard you screaming, yeah. somebody screamed. Yeah, we were, well, we were, she came up like right here and she had she leaned back to get her and i was going forward to get her and then she finally just rolled down before we could pick her up but she's a little bit bigger than she was okay so uh a little bit of anyway, stuff happening that's the only thing exciting everything else was uh uh about the same as what we've seen before uh one good one good thing which is which is typical not having the, like predators like bass in here or whatever like especially around the, the rocks along any of the rocks on the dam even around the dock um we were seeing a lot of uh, fathead minnows. Okay. Here, so it's a lot of fathead, because they don't have a predator in here now. Though. Right, which helps them breed, which yeah, will be so more they're breeding and they've bred and, and whatever probably at least the other season and they've hung around. So that's been a good thing. So you've got a good uh, grocery base right, right. now for when. When should we put the bass in? This spring would be probably would be good. Okay. Um, let's see. You can get a. Oh wow! Yeah, they've got a little bit of size here. to them. I mean, even some little guys, if you will, like this guy right here. If you're done, but you know, oh, you've yeah. got that's one. That's, so that's one that's, that's born one that's here. Bred in here. Yes, yeah, that's one of the homegrowns there. Nice. And Oop. then you've got the, you know, these guys here. I mean, they're you know that's that's getting the breeding size right there. Right. So those there, and uh, like I say, you've got got multitude of sizes. Uh, that was the last year's fish there. Nice. So. Yeah, he's a big that's one. That's a hybrid. That's a hybrid. Yeah. yeah. But uh, yeah, everything's everything's okay. looking good. Cool. Uh, as far as like say the, the numbers and the sizes and all, they're, they're they're doing doing what you want. Doing what you want. So mm -hmm. you want to get that you know forage base established good first. And, uh, right. And then, then you can add the add the predators in. And, They'll know, be let, happy. Let them kind of. Do their thing too. So, and we put a little structure in it like this right here. I mean, this stuff right here will help too, as far as that'll help so that the forage fish can hide, right? Correct. Okay. Correct. And like when the fry, like when fry are produced along the shoreline, the fry can get into this. And not only can the fry hide in that, is that that's a lot of surface area there, and so that creates a, a huge habitat for microorganisms and zooplankton and stuff like that to get in there that those little fish can peck on and eat. Okay. Uh, so. Uh, and and it also of course it's it's you know it's a fish, fishable habitat so you could cast around it and stuff like that and know that you know when you have predators in they go go where the grocery store is so a little you have different grades of fish hanging off of this thing and even some of those bluegill in it or around it you know the the bass the predator fish are going to hang on the edge of it so you could fish around this and you know be afforded a little better chance of catching okay. catching one because you'll concentrate them in there a little bit makes sense so but it's going in the right direction. Oh, that's what we what like. Want. Living aeration sent me a aeration system. They want me to try oh, out. Oh really? Okay. Now is that a? Uh, how many pads is that? Six. Like that? Two. Six. Six. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Are you gonna hub it off the island over there? Yeah. Like we talked about before. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. See how that goes. So yeah. we yeah we went ahead and go. We got power out there last week. Uh, who was that again? Living aeration. Yeah. Yeah, this, I mean, that looks good when you've got a variety of, uh, you know, sizes like that. From big, mediums, and smalls. Oh, you got you know, one dropped out. You're just having a bad day, ain't you? Yeah, he, he just going to go. Um, well, you know, you'll have, you know, good breeding class this year because these guys, you'll have a, a lot of more, more breeding this year because there's fish have, more fish percentage wise at that breedable size so they'll, they'll uh be able to take off and even produce more but then you what, what, what any kind of predators added to the system though then obviously you're gonna start losing some of those to degree so that's why you want to kind of always get the other ones ahead of the game if you can well good so our catfish hand ate all of them no Spies didn't see any of them. I guess they go pretty deep though. They do. This time of year, they're probably deeper. And and also catfish uh, uh, are harder to catch with any any kind of electrical equipment because they um, 
the Noski also what happens is that they that skin on them basically acts like almost like an insulator. Yeah, and, and, and they'll sense it a ways off, and so they'll be deep, and they'll just kind of you know I'm not saying you we can catch them, but we just but use they sense us before we see them, and they can kind of elude us. I mean, sometimes, you know, we'll catch them around shorelines and we'll catch, that's why I was working this rock pile some, because usually, um, you know, they'll be around, hanging around the rock piles and areas like that uh, when, when they can. Gotcha. Well, cool. So, that was looking good, though. Yeah. So, that's, that's always encouraging. What do you think, Jamie? I'm excited. I'm ready to get these in. These are going to be great for the video. Yeah, that's going to help out. Gotta get you uh get you rolling on some uh predators here. Yeah. And uh we're just starting now like in March, so I'd say come April that'd be a really great time to get time to get some. Alright. Sounds good. Alright. Yeah, mark these just a little bit. I mean I'm not sure if you'll be able to it's see right. them too much. My my oldest daughter lays on the dock and, and holds the line and fishes. That's so funny. <laughs> And she catches them. Hey, that's, that's, that's good. Yeah, she's happy with that. So, cool. All right, we're heading out to put the Christmas trees out. Nice. All right. More fish habitat. <clears throat> Abity patty. Nice. Mosquitoes get big out here in North Carolina. <laughs> Yeah, then we'll know where they're at. Yeah, that's nice. All right, they're in. Nice. We'll just go and have them pass off here. They'll probably catch them. Yeah, they'll like that. And once we get some bass in here, they're going to hang out. Just strategically place them right here and there so that way you guys can just come here and pass them. That makes sense. Cool. We appreciate it always. See you next time.